Again, imagine this happening seven years ago with the Obergefell decision. Did that happen? Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we've got a little bit of a somber episode today, talking about the Supreme Court decision and what that means. Coming up next. Right, coffee, my sidekick. Always good. Well, I hope you're having a good day. It's been a week for the record books, as it were. One for the books. Unprecedented. We've seen earlier this week the leaking, so-called, of the document that's going to basically overturn Roe v. Wade. Now, I was hoping and praying for this, and truthfully assume that this would happen in my lifetime, uh, just with the advent of so many pro-life uh, and abolitionists, which aren't quite the same thing, movements, and the fact that you can't get around the, that this is baby, baby murder. I mean, it just is. Uh, the fact that many minority groups are actually targeted. We're going to do another video on that probably next week because there's too much in this video. They do target. Margaret Sanger was an avid racist. She hated dark-skinned people. She hated black people. She hated the melanated class, right? The people, you know, calling them human weeds. This is all documented. And yet Margaret Sanger is celebrated. There's an award after her name. Hillary Clinton's won this award. NARAL, of course, North American, you know, Baby Murder Association, whatever it stands for. Uh, of course, Planned Parenthood is huge. They still get taxpayer funding dollars. Not to mention many other insane people. I mean, it's just insane. And what they're doing with their reactions is showing they are worshiping Baal. They're worshiping Molech. They're worshiping demons. You don't act this way if it's just a choice. I'm not talking about getting a tattoo. I'm not talking about whether you should drink decaf or regular or drive a Ford or a Chevy. It's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the murder of children. So we're going to look at a few things. Number one, that this is an unprecedented breach in trust. It's treasonous. It's not standard fair. Okay. It's not precedent. It's treason. This is treason. Whoever did it should be tried for treason and executed. Why? Because this is extreme because what you're doing, maybe that's too much. I don't know. But what you've done is incited violence. You're now inciting violence because the ceasing of violence, or at least trying to push this back to the state level, which this isn't going to quote unquote end abortion by any means. It's just going to end it on a national level, something that it never should have been to begin with ever, never once. Okay. This is a state's rights. Now I'm avidly pro-life. You shouldn't abort or murder your baby at any point, whether they're one month from conception or 10 years from conception or 90 years from conception. So this is treasonous, and this person should be dealt with as someone who committed treason. Secondly, secondly, there's an article, uh, many others as well, Breitbart article, and I'll drop it in the description, <clears throat> that talks about people stalking the Supreme Court justices' houses. This is mob rule. This is intimidation. So secondly... We don't want to live under intimidation. You don't, even if you're a leftist. And I don't think a lot of leftists watch this channel. If you do, fine, great, welcome. But I want you to understand, or maybe you can share this with your leftist friend or colleagues, that we don't, no one wants to live in a society where mob rule wins. This is the Middle Ages. This is barbarism. This is what the, the Scythians and barbarians that we see in the New Testament that are talking about. People that were just irate, evil people doing evil things, raping and pillaging, taking whatever's there. I mean, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Ninevites, these people were just raging, violent people. And it's because much of this, if not all of this, is because of their gods. The false gods require violence. They require anger. They require blood sacrifice. Remember though, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins, but it's the right shedding of blood. God, Yahweh also requires a blood sacrifice, but it's the blood sacrifice that he took on himself, 
not human sacrifice, not our own blood. And when you turn to Christ, you have his blood wash you, which, you know, in our modern mind, we're like, oh, blood's gross and nasty. But it is also lifeblood. And it's the shedding of blood that forgives sin and gives thus new life. So turn to Christ if you have not. I'm serious because this is, the side is not going to win. In fact, briefly, let's look at Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us burst their bonds and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, as for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you and ask for of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. That is a promise. Now that's talking about Calvary. That's talking about Christ and Christ has conquered the grave. There's so much to do with that. So much happened at Golgotha that we just celebrated a few weeks ago on Easter. So much. Theological depth is just is astounding. But it's not just these people are over here and this other people, Christians over here, frozen, chosen, and just we're going to battle it out now. No, come to the light as he himself is in the light and have forgiveness of sins. We don't want to live in a society that has the wickedness that mob rule brings. We want to order and just society. The scripture talks about living at peace with all people, praying for the rulers and authorities, praying for those who hold their authority over you. Presidents, governors, kings, and all in authority. Pray for a peaceful and quiet life. I don't want a life of war. You don't want a life of war. No one does. War is evil. War is bad. It's necessary sometimes. Yes, but it's bad. It's crumbling, wicked. Just just, just, just society falls. We don't want it. We don't want it. We don't want to live in a society that is run by mob rule. So these people, I mean, again, imagine this happening seven years ago with the Obergefell decision. Did that happen? Did supporters of Scalia and Clarence Thomas... And other conservatives who voted against it, Alito, I believe it was actually, was it, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was 6-3. Just those three men voted against it. Did we go to Kagan's house and Sotomayor and Ruth Bader Ginsburg house and demand blood and shake our fists at them? How dare you pass this? Were there Christians? Was Russell Moore or, or Al Mohler or Tim Keller, Francis Chan, D- Joel Osteen? T. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Bodie Bauckham, Tom Askell, any of these guys raging and yelling, even conservatives, Dennis Prager, Rod Dreher, you know some of these names, I'm sure, Sean Hannity, conservative politicians, Mitch McConnell, was he there? Rand Paul, our senator here in Kentucky, was he there? Actually, McConnell is too. Donald Trump, who was running for president or about to run for president. George Bush, was he railing? Was he going after? Was he stoking the fires? No. This is wicked. And you leftists are the fascists. You are. You are literally the people that you say you're not. You're literally fascist and, quite frankly, commies, which, in my estimation, I need to do more. It's not just the spectrum of right, left, but you go so far, it's like this circle. And they meet in the same spot. Again, I'm not a political economist. I am an amateur historian. And the ideas are so similar. They're not just, oh, further left, far right, far left. No, you're going and really you just go back and meet in the middle. And it's the same thing. Go back around. We want to be up here. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to be back down here having mob rule. That's number two. You don't want mob rule. Nobody wants mob rule. That's what they do in third world countries. 
That's what they do in places where the government runs everything and there's food shortages, jobs, there's corruption at every turn. The police are paid off. You don't call the police when you have a problem, right? You don't get an EMT. There's no roads that are paved. People think through this through. The shopping malls are going to be gone. The, the Amazon, the Starbucks, they're gone. They're going to erase. But much deeper than that, if you don't know Christ, you eventually will perish and you'll be forever lost. Turn to Christ if you don't know him. Turn to Christ if you don't know him. Thirdly, human dignity is massive. Human dignity matters. And this is something we can see even modeled by the early Christians who would take in children and adopt them because people would leave the children for dead in the streets. We have to have, and you know, dare I say, a holistic view of life and not just the baby only, but support the woman who is the single mom who, yes, committed a sin, possibly had fornication, whatever, the boy, the guy left, whatever it is but impacting and creating more sin when there is sin, right? Oh, let's murder the baby because of rape. No, this is a sin. There's more sin. No, <laughs> not, you don't add more sin up and then have better solutions, better outcomes, but rather we should open ourselves. Please open yourself to either supporting adoption ministries, supporting pregnancy centers, supporting in adopting or at least fostering other people, children, people who they say, yes, I want to have a child. We must support this, which goes then to, of course, end of life. This is number three, the end of life, euthanasia and all the other things. Because ultimately what happens is we see what the Nazis do. Life, unworthy of life, they called it. Because you have a pro-abortion argument that goes further. You know, oh, a month old, a six month old, a two year old. Oh, viability. We've heard that, right? Viability. I know 25 year olds that aren't viable outside the womb. Should we kill them? We can't advocate murder because it doesn't stop. Leftists, people on the right, it doesn't stop with the unborn. And we've seen this in Scandinavia. We've seen this in Canada. We see this in many other places around the world. And we have the most liberal, insane, progressive so-called policy on abortion. China, North Korea, we have the same type of abortion policy. Most abortions are stopped at eight or 12 weeks. You cannot have it after that in these other progressive places, including Scandinavia, Sweden, Norway, uh, Finland, places like that. And yet they're the progressive ones and we're going to go back in time. Don't listen to that nonsense. We're not going back at all. We're going back to the right thing that it should never have gone to begin with. You're down in the Southwest and the Grand Canyon is down. You see signs for the Grand Canyon and then this and getting closer. And there's a kind of road off the way and people are like, oh, it's stop. You need, you, you need to, there's, you need to turn around this road. Just, there's a dead end. It just goes straight, straight into the Canyon. And you're like, oh, cool. And you drop it down a gear and you just gas it. At some point, you're either going to crash. You're going to go careening off into the Canyon or the people in your car if you're insane, are going to grab the wheel and crash you, smash the car up, because that's better than going off the cliff. Sometimes it's going to get hurt. But if you're careening towards a canyon, it's not progress because you're going to crash and burn. And frankly, I don't know who it is. I don't really care who it is. But people want to destroy the country, period. They want us divided. They want the infighting. This is exactly why this was released. This is exactly why we've had the race riots over the last few years. This is why we have the left versus right. This is why we have the rhetoric from Joe Biden and so many other clowns who don't know anything about how to actually be uniting. They're not uniting anybody. They're furthering dividing. Barack Obama divided the country for eight years. Bush before that with the war and everything else. And then into Trump. Trump's taking in all this. And he was divisive with how he talked. But at least he's saying, hey, I like America. The only president in recent memory that actually likes America, in my estimation, have some arguments. So again, this is practical, hopefully, arguments. How do we deal with these arguments? Well, there's some tweets I found. Dr. Amir Khan, DP on Twitter. Except for it is, right? Because if you have the free reign to murder a child, even the child be small and has no name, and you don't know what the child's face looks like, that's a problem, 
right? Just it'd be the same thing as if certain groups of people, you know, say lighter skinned, less melanated people got to just take whatever they want from any store they want. Would that be okay? No. Why? Because that would demean and degrade the whole system. Or say it's the other way around. People from indigenous people or people from Africa. See the point? So, no, it is our business. Society as a whole, we are a community. We are individuals, but we are also a community. Ethan Klein says on Twitter, Women are now officially second-class citizens with Roe v. Wade overturned. The very basic right to control your body is lost. End quote. Okay, first of all, it's not overturned. It's not till the end of June that it will be or will not be overturned. Secondly, the very basic right to control your body. We're not talking about tattoos. We're not talking about whether you're going to eat a 1,200 calorie diet or a 4,000 calorie diet. We're not talking about whether you're going to get sunburned or not, whether you're going to wear tight shoes that don't fit you or tight clothes that don't fit you, some clothes or no clothes. We're not talking about what kind of hairstyle you're going to have. We're not talking about whether you wear glasses or you take them off, whether you get LASIK or whether you wear contacts. We're not talking about anything remotely to do with your body. We're talking about a little tiny body that you conceded to 99% of the time. Very, very small is the R word or incest. The rest of the time is inconvenience. This would be inconvenient to have a child. So I want to end the life. That's what it is. Don't let that argument sway you. If you want to, let's ban everything. All abortions that have to do with one night stands, the boyfriend, oh, college, oh, this, oh, it's, it might help on oh, my fear. Oh, I can't afford it. It's going to be poverty, Down syndrome. This is what, again, the Nazis did. The Nazis do not see the correlations. But the left doesn't want that because, remember, the left doesn't like dissent. The left doesn't want to be criticized. You don't have the right to murder another baby another body. It's not a clump of cells. It's not a parasite as I watched one guy on uh, doing a man on the street interview. She said she's the host and it's a parasite. No, it's not, you fool. It's not. It's not a parasite. That's a disgusting, wicked way to think. Change your thinking and repent and turn to Christ. He will wash you. He will clean you. But you have to humble yourself. Don't come to him with your arrogance and, and your self-righteousness because you will be damned. Last tweet from Radical Jesus. Overturning Roe is going to get people killed. It's a fact. No, fool. People are getting killed now. That's a fact. Millions upon millions. Tens of millions have died legally since Roe was enacted in 1973. People are not going to get killed. Oh, it's they're going to do abortions outside in the this and the, in the criminal in the by the. Oh, it's bad over here in the dark alley. Oh, so you want to make it harder for people to have abortions? Yeah, I want to make it harder for people to rob banks or I don't know rob Walgreens. Have I want to discourage criminality? I want to discourage bad behavior, right? Do you do this with children? And again, I guarantee you so many of these leftists have zero children or like one. And they don't see any sort of connection. And if they do and they bring it back home to their child, they're like, oh, well, I mean, it doesn't really apply to me. We see those all the time with, you know, man on the street interviews, you know, affirmative action or equal pay or this or that. There's so many more tweets, so much more nonsense. And yet reverse this. Katanji Brown Jackson, new Supreme Court, though she's not on this, she will be next year. Yay. She doesn't know what a woman is. So do women have control of their bodies? Because Khan says they do and they've lost it. Ethan Klein says they do. Many, many others say they do. But can't I be a woman? Right? Mentally, that's all I have to do. I push back on people in the comment section. on Well, I look forward to your transition. There's a place, I think it's in Germany, where they have parking spots for women. This is in Germany. Closer parking spots for women. And I joked about that. It was one string that's popping into my mind. Well, great. I can identify as a woman when I park my car. Get out, walk as a man, and then walk back to my car as a woman. Get in and then drive away as a man. 
piece of cake. You know, some people engage me on it. Well, you know, that's not that easy. I'm like, yes, it is that easy. Your logic is stupid. Your logic is flawed. It doesn't work. Either I can be a woman anytime I want, just be, I'm going to go to the women's dressing room. Oh, hey, ladies, how we doing? Oh, that's nice. You know, and use my video camera or maybe not, just my own eyes. Go to the locker room, maybe compete in some swim tournaments, maybe not. Or you have to go through this massive process where you have to legally change your name. You have to have surgery. You have to have people think you're a woman and not a dude in drag or common sense says we need to get you some help because this is a disorder which is it you can't have it all ways people you can't have it all ways ultimately it's nonsense right but you have caitlin jenner winning woman of the year when she he didn't even have a single womanly thing including a period right first time year right First, for uh, yeah. woman of the year, great. Sorry, Bruce. No. And you have woman of the year again with what's his what's his face? Not a very attractive woman either. <laughs> the admiral. Like you're not, you're not, so men are better at everything, including being women. That's what we're getting at. Yay! Wow. What does it mean to be a woman? Not a whole lot. To quote a new documentary. Even exile. I haven't seen it yet, but looking forward to it. Fourthly, fourthly, number four, we're not going backward. Okay. This is changing the direction. And I said this before briefly, changing the direction of the federal decision that should never have been. Okay. We're going back to the 50 states where Kentucky, we're going to le- make it illegal. New York, you want to kill your babies? Well, again, that's a state right. California, state right. Texas, no, we're not doing that here. You already have like 27 or 28 states that are going to ban abortion once this happens. Great. Praise God. We're getting a furthering division, a furthering sifting out of people, the Looney Tune crazies. Sorry. People who think they can be anything they want, yet there is no God. Think there's design and order in the world, and yet there is no designer or order giver. They worship themselves. They worship Molech. They worship Baal. There's people who worship God. Which is it? You're going to serve God? You're going to serve Baal? Before I forget, Jeremiah 7, 30. For the sons of Judah have done evil in my sight, declares the Lord. They have set their detestable things in the house that is called by my name. Notice, they've done these detestable things, calling it God's house to defile it. And they have built the high places, places of Tophet. Tophet, Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters with fire, which I did not command, nor did it come into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when it will be no more called Tophet, or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. And they will bury Tophet because there is no room elsewhere. And the dead bodies of the people will be food for the birds of the air, the beasts of the earth, and none will frighten them away. None will frighten them away. I didn't even command it. I didn't even think about it. Now, of course, God thinks of everything. We know this. But it's so emphatic. God is not doing this. God is not behind this. He's not behind Planned Parenthood. He's not behind NARAL. He's not behind AOC and Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi and and Elizabeth Warren screaming her fake rant. I'm sure you saw this. All theater. All theater. But these people get lots and lots of money from the pro-abortion lobby. Lots of money. Buco dollars. Millions and millions of dollars. They don't want to lose that. They don't want to lose their constituency. But they're on the losing side. You want to be on the right side of history, so-called? This is the right side of history. The stopping of the murder of the unborn. Okay? Abolition. Just as slavery was 150 years ago, abolitionists were called all sorts of names, and the Democrats and many other leftists and people who loved slavery and were benefiting, I mean, some Republicans for sure, they called for abolition. But why did they not do it? Well, because the black people weren't as smart. They weren't really, they weren't really as strong. They, they didn't really know as much. They didn't really have as much dignity. Sound familiar? Not really human. Right? Of course, 
That's what they all believed. I don't believe that for a moment. But that was the argument in the mid-19th century for slavery. They're less than people. After all, look at them. Look at their dark skin. Look at their this. Look at their features. Whatever their arguments were and how they were, were heinous and evil. And the people who are pro-abortion now claim that they would be anti-slavery. But mark my words, they would not be. Because it's not the arguments and the things that you're standing against that were issues in the past that history is sorted out and we realized who the good guys were and who the bad guys were. It's what you're standing on now. Everybody thinks they would have been that single guy standing against the Nazis, that single family standing against the Nazis or the communists. Would you have though? Because if you're not standing against anything now, you would not have been in the 1930s Germany or 1950s and 60s China or the 1860s and 70s in America against slavery. You just wouldn't be. So take a stand, do the right thing, and love the Lord, trust him. If you don't know Jesus, like literally this is the most important thing. Now, people, oh, I don't care about your religion. I don't care about this. It's not my religion. It's reality. Or it's not, right? There's no middle ground. Right? It's not just some whimsical, fancy book that you know makes me and tells me do the right thing or something like that. 1 Corinthians 15 is so precise in this. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was raised according to the scriptures. But if he hasn't been, we have all people most to be pitied. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your energy. We're just clumps of cells. We're just dust. We're just material. It doesn't matter. Or there is a God who revealed himself in Jesus Christ. There is a God who makes himself known through his word to have relationship through him, not through in, in, in his word, but through the spirit. And we know about him by his word, partly by creation. Yes, he's made himself known to everybody. Romans 1, Psalm 19, we see the heavens declare the glory of God. But specifically, we have this revelation in Jesus Christ, the exact imprint, like a thumbprint of me that is a representation of me. We see this from Hebrews 1, talking about who Christ is. Literally, people, this is the most important thing. Repent so that you may have life, real life, abundant life, good life now. Not fictional, flimsy life. Because of, we are all people most to be pitied if we hope in Christ in this life only. You're wasting your money, your 10%, your 20%, whatever you give, your time, your energy, your books you're reading, the movies you're watching, the things you're supporting, the videos you're making, the evangelism that you're doing, the arguments you have at Thanksgiving. It's all pointless if Jesus is not risen from the dead. But alas, Christ has risen from the dead to the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Those who have come before us will rise first in the resurrection and then those who have died afterward. All can be raised. All can come to the knowledge of the tra truth. Romans 12, 12. Let's pull up that and then Deuteronomy and we'll call it good. Love one another. We'll start in 10 with a brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, but fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, being patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Be vigilant, church. Be encouraged. If you know Christ, this is in his hand. Remember Psalm 2 when we began. Why do the nations rage? His, his king in Zion. Why do they take their stand against the Lord and against his anointed? People are doing that. They're raging. They're chanting. They're wearing handmade garb. They've got their signs. Not my, not your body, blah, blah, blah. Well, the body inside you isn't your body either. It's not a tumor. It's not a parasite. It's a human being made in God's image, just like you. Turn to Christ and he will take you. But you have to repent in humility. It's not this namby-pamby, wishy-washy Jesus, oh, please come to me. No, he will strike you down with the sword of his mouth. He will smite you and send you into eternal torment. If you don't bow to him and turn to him now. I pray that you will. We're going to end it there. Hope you found this helpful. Love you all. You have a great day. Don't forget to like and share. Please comment. It does help the old algorithm out quite a bit. And um, yeah, until next time. We'll see you later. Be against the world for the world. Bye.